And one thing you know, if you talked, uh, uh, you mentioned we talked 20 years ago, and I'm going to get to that, but you should have known 20 years ago. You're not going to out-talk me, so let me ask my question. I'll let you talk, then I'll go back to <laughs> the next It goes both point. ways, yeah. All right. All right, guys, so we got to talk about a heated debate between Al Sharpton and Bevik Ramaswamy. Bevik Ramaswamy, who's a GOP candidate that has been on everybody's podcast, everybody's mainstream liberal media or conservative outlet because, you know, everybody hates the guy, right? So everybody wants to interview him. Everybody wants to talk to him. Everybody hates him, okay? And uh, Al Sharpton definitely hates Bevik Ramaswamy because Bevik Ramaswamy called out woke race officers like him, right, Al Sharpton, and his goons, Ayanna Presley and Embro X. Kendi, who sound like modern-day grand wizards of the KKK with their racial rhetoric. I mean, I literally just did a video about Joe Rogan and Bill Maher basically roasting the woke in their racialized rhetoric, comparing it to the Ku Klux Klan, which tells you everything you need to know about how most people in this country definitely believe that these people are super racist, and they definitely sound like the Klan, okay? It is not out of the mainstream to make that analogy because Democrats have set the precedent that, hey, it's okay to make these types of analogies. Specifically, when you are making these types of analogies, trying to smear the GOP and GOP presidential candidates or governors like they did with Ron DeSantis when you had a woke Hollywood actor come out here and compare him to the Grand Wizard of the KKK. Or, for example, when Hakeem Jeffries who now is the leader of the Democrats in the House, he compared uh, Trump when Trump was president to the Grand Wizard of the KKK. But Al Sharpton seems to have forgot about that in this interview. And it's going to get triggered, right? It's going to get triggered when Vivek Ramaswamy brings up the clear double standard and hypocrisy of the left in regards to how they always uh, are calling people on the right, uh, the KKK, white supremacists using hyper, um, you know, extreme rhetoric uh, when it comes to smearing their political opponents. But then when it gets done back to them, they want to boo-hoo, whine, and cry about it. So without further ado, go ahead and roll the clip. Welcome back to Politics Nation. According to a brand new Wall Street Journal poll out today that was conducted entirely after the first Republican presidential debate and mostly after the release of Donald Trump's Fulton County mugshot, the former president holds a whopping 46-point lead over Florida Governor Ron DeSantis among GOP primary voters, 59 to 13 percent. My next guest is also somewhere on that list, but with much less support with 5 percent. Joining me now is 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, and engaging us in this conversation. Let me, let me, I want to start with comments you made repeatedly now, referring to Massachusetts Congresswoman Ayanna Presley and author uh, Ibram Kendi as, quote, grand wizards of the modern KKK. Now, I understand you differ with both of them politically and probably with me, but as a graduate of Harvard and Yale universities, I believe you must be aware the Ku Klux Klan is not a political party. It's a terrorist organization. Historians view the Klan as the driving force behind lynchings of blacks in the American South. More than 4,000 people murdered from 1877 to 1950. And the group is linked to numerous other acts of racial violence continuing through the civil rights movement to the present day. You're running to be the leader of the free world. So your choice of words matter. Have you taken any time mm. to reflect upon the possibility that comparing your political rivals to murderous terrorists might put their lives in danger at a time when hate crimes are on the rise? Or do you just don't care? So, so Reverend Sharpton, I don't look at the world through political parties. Frankly, it's good to see it's been 20 years since we last spoke. And part of the reason that I came to that event 20 years ago with you is that you were a political outsider just like I am in my own party. But let me talk about the issue you're actually asking about, which is that, you know, what's toxic about that old world view of organizations like the KKK, which have been a god awful stain on our national history, is that they say that your skin color determines what you're allowed to say, what you're allowed to think, to say you have to shut up, sit down and do as you're told because you're black or brown skinned. 
Well, you know what Ayanna Presley said much more recently is that we don't want any more black faces that don't want to be a black voice. We don't want any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown voice. And so, yes, I do think there are echoes of a historical ugly racism in this country now showing up in new clothing. To say we and don't want to lead us to the next president is a united nation where we, nation do not want where we black don't actually voices. judge each other on to the color of our skin. To say that is not going with sheets and burning crosses and lynching people. She, if she said something you disagree not, with, the point I'm you, making. The, 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 you cannot equate Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan with somebody saying something that you think is a little controversial or a little too far. Some of our relatives so were Sharpton, terrorized Reverend by the Sharpton, Ku Klux Klan. I, I'm trying to get you to Reverend understand Sharpton, the I know pain you're intellectually of that. honest. I, I know you're an intellectually honest guy, and so I will remind you that Hakeem Jeffries drew analogies between Donald Trump and the Ku Klux Klan, and I don't think you had him on pressing him in the same way. So we're drawing analogies here to he make a point. He did not call Donald and the Trump point I'm making, the grand dragon of the KKK. He did not call he dra- compared Donald, Donald Trump and orders of the modern to the KKK. KKK. Let's not change what was said. A- so, Reverend Sharpton, though, I'm calling out a double standard and saying that certain people can use certain analogies to make a point. Well, I'm using an analogy to make a point. And the point I'm making is we should stop seeing each other on the basis of our skin color. It was god awful when the KKK did it. But you know what? We have to learn a lesson in the present that we're creating more racial division in this country. But you when you say if you have black in, skin, you can only think one thing. You cannot do it being insensitive to our feeling. Like, that that's like calling somebody uh, of any kind of group that had a, a, a group that were terrorizing. So I agree with you. We need them. sensitivity. So I think and, we need to be very careful about that. And I wanted to raise that with you directly. Let me, let me go to my next point. And I, You've and spoken I respect out that you're able to have an open conversation. Campaign, That's what I want to ask country. you a couple of questions. And one thing you know, if you talked, uh, uh, you mentioned we talked 20 years ago, and I'm going to get to that. But you should have known 20 years ago. You're not going to out talk me. So let me ask my question. I let you talk. Then I'll go back to <laughs> Goes the next both point. ways. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you see, now you heard that. One thing I want to note here, right? I want to note why does it look like Al Sharpton has a bobblehead, right? It looks like his head is too big for his body. Okay. It just looks weird to me to have that super skinny body and that big head. <laughs> I just say he always looks weird. But as you saw there, Al Sharpton certainly was not expecting to be confronted with the fact uh, Hakeem Jeffries, the current leader of the Democrats in the House, once basically made an analogy comparing Donald Trump to the KKK. Now, Democrats do it so much on their side in regards to calling Trump a white supremacist and this, that, and the other. Again, they it, it's become like they're deaf to it, right? They don't They don't understand. He doesn't realize that oh, my side does the exact same thing that I'm complaining about. But I want to go ahead and, and show this clip of Hakeem Jeffries being confronted on his comments about Trump since um, Al Sharpton seems to have forgot that he, in fact, did make those comments while Al Sharpton is <laughs> denying or pretending that he didn't know. Do you regret going that far in your comments on Monday? With respect to the comments of a few days ago, We've got to have an opportunity for at least one day a year to have a candid, if sometimes uncomfortable, conversation about race. Seems to me that we can't have that conversation on Valentine's Day. We can't have that conversation on St. Patrick's Day. It's perhaps appropriate for us to be able to have that difficult discussion on MLK Day when we're celebrating the life and legacy of a champion for racial and social justice. Yes, but you the called, I mean, but you called the president the grand wizard. Uh, meaning of the KKK. That's language of the KKK. You think the president of the United States is connected to the KKK? He's a Klansman? Uh, absolutely not. And as you know, Allison, I did not use the words racist in any of my comments. In fact, Wolf Blitzer in the past has asked me whether I believe the president is a racist, and I've consistently said no. I did use a colorful phrase, but of course I don't believe that the president is a card-carrying member of the KKK, but it did capture a troubling pattern of racially insensitive and outrageous at times behavior Look, in the alt-right. You make good points, and I think that after Charlottesville, it was you who said that the president was a racial arsonist, meaning, I assume, that he inflames 
um, racial tensions. And I think that all that is demonstrably true, as you've just pointed out. But, you know, the Grand Wizard, I mean, the reason that I ask you about it is because you call it colorful language, but, you know, isn't that inflaming the situation? Is that helpful, likening someone to the head of the KKK? Well, I think, as I just pointed out, I do not believe that the president is a card-carrying member of the KKK, but he has presided over and engaged in directly a series of racially insensitive remarks. We cannot whitewash that. Yeah, so you see, now you heard that, okay? Al Sharpton seems to either be flat-out lying, which he probably is, or he seems to have forgotten that Hakeem Jeffries, in fact, did claim that Trump was the grand wizard of the White House, okay? He basically compared Trump to an officer of the KKK, which Al Sharpton on national television straight up denies that Hakeem Jeffries said it, <laughs> even though Hakeem Jeffries uh, basically didn't take it back. He didn't apologize for it. He essentially doubled down on it, okay, but says, hey, I don't think the, the president's racist, okay? I mean, <laughs> of course he does, okay? This is the same guy as well, too, that wrote an op-ed in which he essentially described black conservatives in Congress as token blacks and right-wing opportunists. So again, you have a guy who uses racialized language to describe his political opponents, whether that's comparing them to grand wizards in the KKK or describing black people who disagree with him politically as token blacks. But you don't ever see him being dragged around on the liberal media and given his spanking for saying these type of racialized comments. But when it comes to Vivek Ramaswamy, though, and him doing the same thing that the left routinely does to people on the right, all of a sudden these people want to boohoo whine and cry about it, right? They want to be so upset. They want to be so butthurt. And when confronted on the hypocrisy of it, Al Sharpton flat out just denies it. Oh, well, I, he never said that. <laughs> it's like, Al, he did say it. He definitely said it. It's something that's said routinely on the left about their political opponents. Whether that, again, saying that they um, espouse white supremacy, okay, calling uh, members of the GOP racist. You, you, you do that all the time. You do it all the time. So again, it's just hilarious when he gets confronted with the fact that, hey, the left does this and then he wants to play dumb about it. But again, notice, once again, in another conversation about this topic, the person that Vivek Ramaswamy is debating on this topic refuses to actually engage with the real conversation, which is that, hey, you have somebody in the Democrat Party that is telling minorities that they're not real minorities if they don't agree with them politically. They are trying to control how minorities are able to think, how they're able to act, what they're able to say based off the color of their skin, which is basically like the same thing as the KKK, right? But again, they don't want to have that conversation. They don't want to engage in it. They don't want to acknowledge that that's an issue. They want to make these claims to try to deflect from the conversation. Well, the KKK lynched and murdered people, right? You can't compare her to that. She doesn't do that. Well, Donald Trump didn't lynch and murder people, but you compare him to the KKK, Ron DeSantis didn't lynch and murder people, but you compare him to the KKK. So again, I'm trying to figure out how this works. Is it only okay when you're doing it to people on the right, when you're comparing people on the right to the KKK and the Klan and the wizards and the dragons, right? Is, is that, that's what is only okay? Because that's what it seems like the standard is. These people are not nearly as outraged when Democrats do it to Republicans and conservatives. They've opened up Pandora's box. Somebody is finally smart enough on the right to actually call the left out on their hypocrisy when it comes to this race issue, and then they want to play dumb about it. They, they want to get triggered and <laughs> say, you're a liar, you're lying. We didn't say that. We don't say that. When they say it all the time. But hey, again, I'm not surprised that Al Sharpton lies. I mean, he's basically created a whole career based off lies and smears. But there's one thing I do want to say before I end this video, right? I'm very disappointed with some of the polls that I've seen after the debate, okay? The poll from the Wall Street Journal that Al Sharpton pointed out at the beginning of this video with Vivek basically losing support and people like Nikki Haley gaining support after the debate, it really goes to show you the shape of the country 
that we're in right now, okay? Where you can watch a debate like that with your own two eyes and your takeaway from the debate and the things that have developed after the debate is that, well, I, I think I like Nikki Haley more than that guy, right? Warmonger, lying ass Nikki Haley, right? Neocon Nikki Haley. Again, it's just, it really blows my mind, right? It really does. But hey, you know, I guess lies and smears uh, work, okay? Because that's the only thing that, has been bought against Vivek Ramaswamy since the debate is nothing but lies and smears. And again, as you can see, they're most certainly having an effect, at least for now. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.